Greetings. Uh, this is a quick follow-up video to one I did a few weeks ago. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, if you're a regular viewer, you may have seen me review this pen. This is a Wingsung 601. This is a vacuum-matic filling pen. It has a ink window and it uses a vacuumatic filling mechanism with a rubber diaphragm that is uh, virtually identical to those on old Parker Vacumatics and Parker 51s. And then you can, as you can see, the pen is very much Parker 51-like. Uh, well, Wingsun has come out with a variant on this pen, which I think is just very exciting, and I wanted to, um, to review that this week. So this is also very Parker 51-like. It's got the Parker Arrow-style clip. Um, one, uh, it's got something that's more Parker-like than uh, the original uh, Wingsung 601 that we saw. So it has a little uh, plastic jewel here at the top, as opposed to the plain metal top that this uh, other Wingsung 601 had, which is very similar to what Parker did. It's got the Parker hooded style nib. Um, this is obviously a transparent demonstrator version with a, um, a bluish green tint to it, which is kind of uh, interesting looking, which is even get more interesting once we see how this fills. So this is also a vacuum filler, but it does not use a diaphragm. It uses a spring-loaded piston pump. So as we push down on this pump mechanism, instead of extending a rubber diaphragm to force air out and allow ink to come in, it has a spring-loaded piston. And as you can see, there's a little breather tube here, which is where the ink is gonna, is gonna come up from. So this, I just think, is a really cool filling mechanism. Um, uh, it remains to be seen in the long run whether that's an improvement over the vacuumatic mechanism. Obviously, um, springs can wear out. Obviously, rubber diaphragms wear out too, etc. So it, it really remains to be seen, I think, in the long term, what turns out to be better. But this is certainly interesting. If not an improvement, it's certainly an a, a, uh, interesting variation. Um, so I'm going to change the camera angle right now, and we're going we're gonna to watch this pen fill. Um, and um, I think that'll be probably the most interesting, interesting, interesting thing to see. So we'll be right back. Uh, as we fill this pen up. Okay, let's see how this fills right now. And um, we're gonna remove the cap from the end. We're gonna put our nib in, and then we're going to push. And there we go, we have each pump we get a good solid squirt of ink coming up into the barrel. And let's just fill this all the way up. I'm probably giving one or two more pumps than we need because this is this filled quite quickly, nicely, and smoothly. So uh, kudos to this filling mechanism. Um, more importantly though, how does this pen write? We'll find that out right now. Okay, what we're writing with here today is a wing sung model 601 and specifically this is the pump filler as opposed to the uh, so that's that's not the vacuumatic. Which is sort of the normal uh, filling mechanism on the on on the 601s. <clears throat> um, this is a um, writing pretty nice. Um, I'm going to say maybe a little better than the original uh, 601 that I that I reviewed. Um, I'm not sure. I, it's got a little bit of feedback, but I'm not sure I would bother smoothing the nib or anything like that. It's it's definitely serviceable straight out of the box. Obviously no flex on this nib. This is a stiff steel hooded nib. This is essentially a ballpoint alternative um, for the most part. This is um, um, uh, definitely a fine, I would, I would say. Um, and um, it uh, seems to be writing, seems to be writing, uh, seems to be writing quite well, um, and at least as good as the uh, as the original 601 that I had. If not, uh, I would definitely say a little better. If I had to rank them uh, on writing, I would say this is definitely writing 
definitely a little bit a little bit better um, same paper different ink so it's it's a little hard to say but um, you know not leaps and bounds better but uh, definitely better and definitely serviceable again uh, pen cost 13 to 16 dollars so you're not talking about a super expensive pen um, and um, definitely writes well and has that cool filling mechanism that we just saw. I mean, you don't get too much cooler than that filling mechanism, especially in a transparent demonstrator like this where you can actually just see it squirting right through the, the breather tube. That was pretty cool. So um, uh, I definitely uh, I definitely like that and, and thought that was cool. Um, so that's definitely worth, uh, worth considering. They do actually make, if you really like the the diaphragm uh, filler as opposed to this uh, spring-loaded pump filler in the uh, 601 they actually make transparent versions of that one as well so you can see the ink squirting up and everything like that but it still has the vacuum diaphragm as well so pick pick what you like okay this ink is Monteverde Horizon blue um, this ink is a really nice vibrant blue and in particular uh, what a lot of people say uh, this ink reminds them of is um, Parker used to make a line of inks called Penman they stopped making them over 20 years ago um, and they only had about a half dozen or so colors I was actually partial to the Penman mocha uh, as I'm a big fan of brown inks, and in particular back in those days, to go back 25, 30 years ago, I pretty much wrote mostly only in different shades of brown. Uh, so I was a fan of the mocha ink, but the whole line was discontinued. The most popular or famous, if you will, of all those is that was the, what they called Penman Sapphire, which was a vibrant blue with uh, that had red sheening, which uh, actually this does as well. You probably won't be able to see it on this paper, um, but uh, the the it's been elusive to try to find used bottles of those. Uh, the, the 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 vintage bottles of the, that ink go for extraordinarily large sums of money, uh, etc. So uh, if you uh, follow the fountain pen community online at all a lot of people say that this ink here this uh, Monte Verde Horizon Blue uh, is the closest thing on the market right now to the uh, Penman Sapphire um, I can't say because I never actually used Penman Sapphire I've seen swatches of it but that's about it I was a uh, like I said I was a big fan of the Penman Mocha but I did not uh, use the Penman Sapphire. So I'll leave that to the judgment of others, but if you are looking for an elusive um, uh, substitute, modern substitute for Penman Sapphire, uh, this uh, Monteverde uh, Horizon Blue um, can be a viable alternative, and this is uh, a pretty inexpensive uh, ink. Um, it's one of the, and, and it comes in a very classic looking ink bottle. Um, it reminds me of just like, you know, old movies. This is the shape of the old ink wells on everybody's desk. So you do have that going for you. So um, it's inexpensive. It's a nice, vibrant uh, blue. It uh, seems to dry well, relatively well behaved, flows nicely. Um, so I think, uh, I think uh, it's definitely worth a shot if you're looking for a, a nice uh, blue ink um, uh, to ease your sadness of not being able to get Parker Penman Sapphire. Um, so that will be it for this uh, quick little update video. I bid you goodbye. If you like this video, please, please subscribe. Uh, if you don't like it, as I always say, please leave me a comment and tell me why. In either case, I bid you good day.